Hi guys, this is Sir Ernest and today we will work on a sample problem involving electric displacement. So the problem reads, suppose a field, suppose the field inside a large piece of dielectric is E0. So that the electric displacement is D0 and that is equal to E0, uh, epsilon naught times E0 plus P, where P is your polarization. Now we have three problems. We are uh, three uh, sub items here. So now, a small spherical cavity, as shown in figure here. So this is your spherical cavity. is hollowed out of a material. Find the field at the center of the cavity in terms of E naught and P, and find the displacement at the center of the cavity in terms of D naught and P. Assume that the polarization is frozen in, so it doesn't change. And the cavity is excavated okay so here so we also do the same for a long needle shape cavity running parallel to p this is your p and do the same for a thin wafer shape uh, cavity perpendicular to p so assume that the cavities are small enough that p e naught and d naught are essentially uniform okay so the idea here is if for example we have our dielectric material so start with letter a so let's say this is our dielectric material so if we're going to carve out our spherical cavity so that means if we're going to carve out our spherical cavity here okay so the idea is the when you carve out this cavity it's the same as superimposing an object with an opposite with the same shape but opposite in polarization so for example in this case the polarization in this dielectric material is in this direction just like what i mentioned earlier okay and superimposing a material whose opposite the, the the direction of polarization so that means the the original polarization here that is upward will be cancelled out by the polarization that is downward okay so in short it's basically uh the, the basic idea is that the uh, the hollow area would be equal to total minus inside Okay, so that means this tells us that the electric field at the center of the cavity or inside the cavity will be equal to the electric field of the dielectric material minus the dielectric at uh, the electric field of the cavity. Okay, and can we go into use this? Uh, relationship throughout the problem okay so uh, eh, so from example 4.2 okay so from example 4.2 we know that the electric field of an of a polarized sphere would be equal to 1 over 3 epsilon naught okay p so again this is from example 4.2 but because the cavity is essentially a material with opposite polarization so we add him here negative oh, sorry this is the, sorry the result from example 4.2 is this one so that means the electric field okay will now be equal to e naught minus this one which is plus 1 over 3 epsilon naught p okay so your electric displacement okay so your electric displacement will now be equal to d equals epsilon e which is equal to 
uh, epsilon naught times e naught plus 1 over 3 epsilon naught p. Okay? So distributing this one, you have epsilon naught e naught plus 1 third p. But because d naught is epsilon naught plus p, so therefore epsilon naught e naught would be d naught minus p. Okay, so this is now equal to um, d naught minus p, and then plus one third p. So therefore. The electric displacement is now equal to d naught minus two thirds p. Okay, so this is now the uh, this is now the electric field. Okay, the center of the cavity and the displacement or electric displacement is this one. Okay, so we're going to do the same for the rest of the problem. Okay, so for example, for the needle, long needle shaped cavity. Okay, so if this is your, again, your dielectric material. Okay. And this is your cavity. Okay. If the ma if the polarization in the dielectric ma material is in this direction. Okay. So that means there are more positive charges here and here. Okay. So there will be accumulation of positive charges here and negative charges here but the cavity is small so these charges are relatively far away from each other okay so the field contributed by this will be very small so therefore the electric by the way this is letter b so therefore the electric field would be approximately equal to the electric field of the dielectric material so therefore the electric displacement which is equal to epsilon naught e will be equal to epsilon naught e naught so therefore the electric displacement for this configuration will be equal to d naught minus p okay so in other words the cavity inside this is the cavity, so that means uh, the electric field inside the cavity would be equal to the electric field. Uh, the uh, yeah, the electric field inside the cavity would still it would be equal to the electric field in the dielectric material. Okay, and then lastly, letter C uh, for a thin wafer. Okay, so again, if this is your die electric material the polarization is in this direction and this is your wafer okay so from here this is the material uh, of course we can define our uh, normal vector and hat okay so the polarization uh, because of this because of the because the wafer is perpendicular to the polarization there will be a um, there will be a bound charge okay on the surface and that is equal to the polarization dot and not okay and this is equal to Okay, so therefore, the field 
due to the plates would be equal to um, negative sigma over epsilon and hat okay so we got this equation for electric fields for plates from equation 2.48 you can just check your books your textbooks on how to how this was uh, derived okay and we're going to use this okay so from this equation we can rewrite this electric field as negative p n hat over epsilon naught so it's now equal to negative p over epsilon naught because n hat and p are in the same direction so basically this is uh, is actually the polarization vector okay so therefore from here we can now rewrite the electric field for the cavity and that is equal to E naught, the electric field in the material minus the electric field for the plate. Okay, so grouping everything together, we now have the electric field will be equal to E naught plus P over epsilon and the dielectric and the electric displacement which is epsilon naught e will now be equal to epsilon naught e plus p which is what which is d naught Okay, good. So this ends the uh, our solution to problem 4.16. I hope you learned something today and thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.